What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack, his name is Bob, and welcome back to a brand new episode of my Cheap vs Expensive series. I actually did that first time, that was... yay! <laughs> this is the series where I take two supplies in the same categories, put them up against each other at different price points, and see which one are worth it at their prices. This has been a great series, this has been a series that has helped so many people out in finding which supplies are worth it and which supplies are right for them. Because you don't always have to spend a lot of money to be a good artist, in fact, you don't have to spend any money to be a good artist, all you need is a pencil and a piece of paper. But for those of you who want to try out new things and you're not quite sure what to go for, this is a series for you and I hope it helps you out. So what are we using today? <laughs> These! This is very difficult to hold. There you go. Today we're going to be using colored pencils and in my right hand we have the Arteza Artist Quality Rich and Vibrant Colors 72 Colored Pencils Expert. That's what we're going to be using. Now these come in at a price of... Really? Okay. These come in at $30 for this pack of pencils, which are pretty cheap actually. 72 pencils for $30. Really, really cheap and... Um, I mean, they're so packed in there. That is pretty impressive. There's no noise. That's pretty cool. Really compact. I'm so used to opening up these things and they just fly everywhere. But that's, um, I'm assuming these are just vacuum packed in there. That's amazing. Hold on, Arteza. And in my left hand, we... That was loud. And in my left hand, we have the Stetler Norris 36 Norris color. Wait, what? What's a Norris? Is that supposed to mean something? Or is that just the type of pencil? I don't know. Anyway, so that's 36 pencils, and they come in at a price at $10 for 36 of them. Now, I think there is a 72 pack of these, um, and... Just thought of something. Hold up, so if this is 36 pencils, and they're $10, this is 72 pencils at $30. 36 times 2 is 72, right? $10 times 2 is $20, so there's only a $10 difference between the two of these. This isn't really cheap versus expensive, is it? All right, well, um, hopefully there's a big difference between the two of these. This is professional quality pencils and these are just standard pencils. I'm really curious if there's actually gonna be a difference here. Whew. Now there is one thing I'd like to say before we get started with this video. I do have an affiliate with Arteza and I am gonna do my best to be as unbiased as possible. They don't pay me to make these videos. They don't do anything for me. Actually, they did send me these, to be fair. They sent me these ones, um, but they haven't asked for a video. I've just decided to make a video. However, if you do wanna get any Arteza products off the back of this, there'll be a link down below in the description that you can purchase with. It's an affiliate link, so I'll get some money out of it too if you do make a purchase through that link. But again, like I say, I am putting them up against this and I'm not gonna give them any sort of preferable treatment. They are gonna be grilled. If they're bad, they're bad i'm gonna call it as it is i just thought i should say that so without further ado let's crack open these pencils see what we got inside of them hopefully it's just gonna be pencils i'm sure we're gonna make a couple of test runs before we actually get started with today's piece and today's piece is gonna be spider-man that's right the best superhero of all time i mean look right listen listen right if you're a fan of marvel come on spider-man right Leave a comment down below letting me know who is your favorite superhero in the Marvel Universe. Very interested to read these comments. Let's get started. <laughs> Starting with these Arteza pencils, they look absolutely stunning. They look super professional. They look really, really high quality and it is really nice. Alongside here, you get the Arteza marking. You also get the Expert, which is the name of the selection of pencils we're using today. Now flipping them over, this is where they excel. You get both the color itself and you get the code assigned to the color. So some people are into having the codes and some people are into having the colors. This way you get the best of both worlds. I don't see a reason why every pencil shouldn't have both. These have both. Now you'll actually notice if we get another one, they each have different plus signs. So this one has three plus signs and this one has one. And what these plus signs are is they are their light fastness rating. And in layman's terms, that basically just means how effective these are once the light is on them, how the pencil, the colors damage in light. So in sunlight, daylight, things like that. I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that the more plus signs, the more light fastness it is. And I think that means the more damage occurs to them over time. So as with all of your artwork, the best bet is to, once you're done with your artwork, put it into a folder and keep it safe from direct sunlight. That is always the best bet with any piece of artwork anyway, so just make sure you do that. Why don't you stay still? 
<laughs> so now taking a look at the Shtetler pencils, uh, these ones are a weird one. I didn't actually know they were tri-gripped, which is just so comfortable. I think every pencil should be a triangular grip. This is such a comfortable way to hold a pencil. I really do like the triangle grip, so yeah, props to them for this. I think this is absolutely fantastic. The pencil itself is extremely bland with only marketing sort of stuff down the sides, barcodes and things like that made in Germany. There, there really isn't any information here telling me what color I have. So you pretty much have to do a visual inspection of what color you have. So let's see how these pencils perform. I'm gonna do a couple of Scribbles. I should say, by the way, I'm using sketch paper. Uh, just, just letting you know. These feel, they feel really waxy. Wow. See if we can blend. Huh. Ooh, look at that. Whoa. Talk about coverage. Wow. That's uh, that's impressive. Let's have a look at these ones. The grip is so much better. I really like the grip. Oh God. Oh, there's a bit of a difference between feel already. That's, um, <laughs> nah, that pigment is... <sighs> Let's jump into drawing Spider-Man right now, and I do hope you enjoy this comparison. This is going to be a fun one because both of these, they're extremely different. So I'm very curious to see what we can do with each of them. Let's go. Okay everyone, so before we actually get started with doing the cheap versus expensive, we need to get a character down on a sheet of paper and today we're drawing Spider-Man. Now this image that I'm working from today is a freestyled Spider-Man that I did during a live stream on twitch.tv forward slash ADC Art Attack. It is a great place to interact with me, to see me do these drawings live and see the creative process behind them. Now as this is a freestyle drawing without any reference, there may be some inaccuracies as we go, but I just wanted to be a little bit more original rather than just copying a straight direct source. With that being said, here is Spider-Man, let's get started. Okay, so it is time to jump in and start using these colored pencils. And I'm gonna start by using the Schettler colored pencils first, the cheap ones, and hopefully produce something of decent quality. But I don't know about that. You see, the moment I started to use these on this paper, I hated them. I thought they were absolutely terrible. And as you can see, there is no pigment at all. It is near impossible to get any color out of these things. And I was so, I was actually considering giving up. You see, it wasn't just the lack of pigment that was bothering me. It was this really aggressive shine and sheen that these colors have. Not only was it a nightmare to record, it was also super difficult to actually draw. I couldn't actually see what I was doing for most of this drawing. And now granted, I didn't do much practice before this. I did a couple of scribbles and that was it and this is normal behavior for me I don't like to do much practice before I get on with a new supply I like to take an organic approach to any supplies that I use I like you to see me grow and progress with the supply as we go and I think it's also the best move for the supplies because otherwise I'd just be using my style that I have and that wouldn't really be a fair judgment on the supply itself I might be a little bit more biased and perhaps my style isn't well suited to these pencils so I just started using them and I was hoping that as I use them the more I use them I would learn new things about them and incorporate their own personal style that they want me to use into it. You know, art is a bit of an adventure. Art is about being creative. It's about learning and growing. And I really did think that I started to learn some things while using these. The first thing is I realized it just wasn't going to happen using any sort of dark gradients at all. Uh, there was no pigment in these pencils at all. So going for those really heavy shadows versus those high highlights, it just wasn't going to happen. And that was when a light bulb went off in my head. And I said, what if I use more colors? You know, instead of going for a few colors with a low to high gradient, why don't I just go for many colors and change it up a little bit? So I started throwing in a little bit more orange, a little bit more yellow, apricot, pink, and these colors really started to breathe a little bit of life into this piece. And I wasn't too upset about the fact that I couldn't get those dark shadows now. You see, I was getting a look that wasn't something I wanted to go for first, but it was something that these pencils decided would be best suited for them. And I listened to it. I listened to what these pencils told me and I'm starting to like it a lot. But there was nothing special about the blues. There wasn't anything about the blues that were different to the reds. So while my assumptions were that the reds were perhaps the ones that lacked pigment, no, it was across the board. They're all pretty much the same. So it is what it is. Overall, I'm actually extremely happy with the results here. I think this looks really, really nice. And I am so surprised by the results here. But I'm not going to talk about these ones too much. And by the way, if you're waiting for the web pattern, that will happen at the end of the video. What we're going to do right now is jump onto using the Arteza pencils. And then we'll come back at the end of the video and review both of the sides together side by side. So let's do it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to jump in using the Arteza color pencils. 
And I'm going to do my best here to be as critical as I can. I don't want to sound too biased, but these were way better, honestly. The moment I put them on the paper, I noticed a huge difference in quality. I mean, first of all, they were so much softer, which allowed me to just enjoy the experience of coloring a little bit more. Now, let me just say right here, by the way, I am mirroring what I've done on the left-hand side on this right-hand side. So whether the shadows make complete sense or not is irrelevant. I'm just trying to mirror it so that it makes sense to compare them at the end. With these Arteza pencils, I took the same approach as I did with the Shetler ones in that I didn't have any practice. So the only practice I had was what you saw at the beginning of this video. And I really felt these were just so much more user-friendly. Now, I am by no means a professional artist when it comes to pencils. Color pencils are not my forte. They're not something I use quite regularly at all. But they were so easy to come to grips with and I felt so confident and comfortable with them that I started to take liberties. I was layering very heavily, trying to push the limits of these layerings, what I could do, how many layers I could do, and they were quite resilient. And that was the point of this. Obviously, that's why the piece won't be the most amazing drawing that you'll ever see. But I really was trying to push the limits of these pencils and get the most out of them and figure out how many layers I could do, how hard I could blend with them, how hard I could press, and they were holding up quite well. I was even able to incorporate those colors that I used on the Shetler ones into this one. So I got those apricots, those oranges, again, trying to mirror what I've done on the left-hand side, and I put them in there, and the pigmentation was just so beautiful. You can see the colors. You know what these colors are. They look great. There's a lot of sheen to them, but there's not so much reflection. There is a little bit of reflection, but it's not major. It's not huge. And as we moved on to the blue areas, oh my gosh. Yeah, the blues were way more superior than the reds. They were blending beautifully. My only regret is that I didn't make Spider-Man blue here because it would have been such a treat to color this entire thing in blue. I felt so much confidence using this. I really did enjoy using them and they're great. Now doing the webbing, uh, there's actually a reason I saved this till last and that was because I didn't know if I wanted to use a fine liner or if I wanted to use the pencils. And based on my experience using the Stettler pencils, I figured it would be best to not offset the color and to use the color pencil. And yeah, I mean, it's not a heavy black. It just sort of worked for what it was supposed to be. It worked into the color pencils. So nothing special, but there it is. And a similar thing with the color pencils of Arteza. However, yeah, the black is just way superior. It was basically like using a fine liner. I love this pencil. Bum, bum, done. Ladies and gentlemen, there is Spider-Man. He is complete. What do you think about it? What do you think of them side by side? I think they look pretty cool. Each side brings its own qualities and we are gonna look at them closely right now and talk about what I think about them. So looking at the Stettler side first, when I started using these pencils, I absolutely despised them. I hated them. I hated the way they felt. I hated the way they look. But once I learned what made them tick, what these pencils wanted me to do, the style that best suited them, loved it. I love the results. I think this came out so good. I am so happy with it. I think if this was a standalone piece and didn't have the Arteza side next to it, this would be beautiful. Really happy with them. And I think for such a low price, they are pretty usable if this is the style you like. And now taking a look at the Arteza side, what a difference. I mean, side by side, this is ridiculous. The blending is beautiful. The layering is beautiful. The colors are beautiful. They were such a treat to use and they certainly are user-friendly pencils. I feel like they can accommodate so many styles. However, let me be a little bit critical because I do think that is very much needed. They are not the best pencils out there. Faber-Castell's Prismacolors, they are in my opinion more superior, but they do run a much higher cost. These pencils are much cheaper and I do think the results look pretty damn cool. What do you think about it, guys? Looking at each of them side by side, which one do you prefer firstly? What do you think of each of the sides? And which one do you think it is worth it at their price points? The Stettler colored pencils coming in at $10 for 36 pencils, or the Arteza colored pencils coming in at $30 for 72 pencils? I am super excited to read your comments down below. And if you really want to know my opinion, I'm going to say the Arteza ones are certainly more worth it. But my personal preferred side has to be the Stettler colored pencils. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The video is complete. What did you think about today's drawing and did you enjoy the video? I really do hope that you found it useful and I hope it helps you out in making a decision on which pencils you think are worth it at their prices and which one you want to go for. Please do not forget today's question of the day, which is who is your favorite superhero in the Marvel Universe? Really excited to read your comments. I'm looking forward to getting hopefully a wide variety of comments. And of course, let me know what you think about this video because it makes me feel good. So that's about all I've got to say, really. Um, take care, 
have yourself a great day, have yourself a great evening, whatever the time of day is for you. And if you're going on the toilet right now, because most people do watch my videos while on the toilet, enjoy that toilet. I do hope you finish up really nicely. <laughs> I know, right? It's crazy. From myself and from Bob. Oh, bugger. I thought I nearly knocked him off. I'd, I've knocked him off once and that was not... i got to choose my words carefully. I'm, I tipped him off the thing once already and that wasn't good. I was so scared of why I broke him. But anyway, from myself, from Bob, be careful. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.